Hi guys, so I quickly wanted to show you my art room and that's my love sack and my domoku pillows and I just want to show you guys my Faber Castle pencils that we'll be using today and these are a wax based pencil and this is the 120 wooden box set and today we're going to do a piece by Hannah Carlson and this is her book Dragoma I think that's how you pronounce it um, so yeah this is my watercolor painting uh, easel but I also use it as a work desk surface um, but yeah let's get started hi guys so let's get started so today we're working on this piece and I'm going to do a voiceover commentary so if you don't want to listen to my voiceover commentary Please feel free to click on the link above. I'm going to create a playlist of background music that you can listen to or you can click on music your, that you have yourself and just throw some music on in the background and listen to and watch the video as it plays. So with this video, uh, with this artwork, sorry, I want to do these two pages together as a whole piece. So I wasn't going to individually work on them. Um, so I wanted to work on them continuously as one, just because I wanted to make sure that they work together as a as a duo rather than individual. guys so let's get started we're not going to do a skin coloring tutorial video because I've already done one in my floral flora video by Jasmine Becker Griffith and I'll be sure to link that above in the video uh, or else look in my description box below so as you can see I'm using a brush and with that brush I'm using um, a solvent called zest and zest is a odorless uh, solvent that basically blends color um, coloring pencils together because most coloring pencils are either wax or oil based and this uh, solvent kind of melts melts or dilutes that that wax or oil based pencils or, or even oil paints so uh, I shouldn't have done that um, using that zest straight away or using that zest on top of each layer of my coloring uh, as I was working with it I realized that this solution this solvent isn't appropriate for uh, in between layers this solvent is more appropriate for the end of a coloring the end of the rendering so once it's completed you would use the zest to kind of blend everything together but what I quickly realized was um, this zest isn't really appropriate or isn't suitable for the way I work. I'm looking for a solvent that I can work in between layers, something that can help me that I can use um, between the layers to blend, but also um, a solvent that allows me to work on top of um, my artwork. And so I think zest isn't really appropriate for me, but it is something that I can continue to use if I want to use at the end of the artwork. So once I do a coloring piece, I can definitely use zest on top just to blend everything together. But at the moment in what I'm after, um, I don't think zest is what I'm looking for in terms of a solvent that allows me to work between the layers. So. You know, Zest is a good uh, product if you want to try it out. A lot of people use it, or you can use Gamsol, which is I I've used in my other videos as well. Um, but yeah, so moving along. So moving along, we're just going to keep shading. Um, you you guys get me um, shade the darker bits with the darker colors, and then they got the mid tones and the highlights. So with me, and because this paper is white, I didn't really um, fill in uh, the highlight section with white pencil. I just left it with the pencil. Um, I think it was because I was hoping to blend it out with either um, Zest or Gamsol, just to keep that uh, highlight pure. Uh, I generally don't feel the need to color in the highlight section white because the paper is white. Same with what I do with watercolor paintings. Um, you don't need to use white paint if the paper is white. Uh, 
So when I was using this, um, these the zest with the pencils and this face on the left, I was using yes zest sorry zest to blend out those layers. But what I quickly realized is that it's really hard to work on top of those layers if you want to add more colors and um, I found it very difficult to add colors uh, what it does is it makes it really muddy looking it um, I'm assuming it's because the zest melts what well, kind of blends melts that um, dilutes that oil oil or wax based pencil so instead of um, allowing it to just sit on top it kind of clumps it together and gives you that muddy look I didn't like it because I guess to the naked eye you wouldn't see it but for me and working so close up with my paint uh, my pictures I can see that I can see that um, texture and it really didn't I did really didn't like it and it really put me off using zest but I know now from talking to a lot of uh, a few other artists um, zest isn't really appropriate you can see here I'm using a dark pencil and um, it's really hard to work back into those layers again it's just because it just slips it just slips from the surface it doesn't really um grab onto anything um but yeah i zest isn't for me i don't think with the way i work but knowing the way um knowing talking to a few other artists and knowing um more about this i realized that this type of product zest is for i guess end use uh, when the when the coloring is pretty much finished or you can use it on an area if you choose to stop working on it so maybe it's something that you can use bit by bit but it's generally not something that you can use on the whole piece and then work on top again um, so yeah if you guys know any um, any solvents that would be suitable for me and what I'm after please get comment below I have used Gamsol and I have used Zest um, a few people I know use Mona Lisa I think that's the brand but um, I'm thinking of trying that out too but it's really hard to get in Australia oh my god I live like so far away and I hate that certain brands certain products are very hard to obtain anyway moving on I'm working on the right side the right um, the right hand face and this skin tone I want to do a bit darker because I just wanted to try out a new color tone and I really liked it in the end um, this the one on the left is more of a fair fair pinky tone and the one on the right is more of an olive base tone um, but I really liked how it turned out I decided not to use uh, zest on on the right hand side and actually I just decided to stop using zest at all just because I was scared of ruining this piece and I was really into this piece and I just didn't want to ruin it and I just wanted to perfect it so maybe later on when I perfect my technique with zest or gamsol I'll bring bring it bring it back into my um, coloring proceed by my coloring process so as you can see here I am using a um, an off white an off-white pencil only because that uh, the skin tone is an olive tone so I know with um, with olive tones the highlight isn't necessarily white so I didn't really want to have a bright white highlight for this this face on the right hand side but um as you can see I'm using more brown olive colors more of a caramel color uh, and I'm not really using um, I'm not using Gamsol as I said before and yeah I'm just building up those layers the best way to um, get your shading right is to layer it, layer it all up and that's what I've been doing and it takes a while but gradually you'll get there
So I'm using a colourless blender pencil and this one is by Prismacolor just because I just feel like I want to blend the colours between. I just feel like sometimes it looks streaky. But anyway, I am using a darker brown just to give me just to give those extra shading. Um, I always feel like I need a brown. As you can see, I did it on the left. It didn't really work out because of that zest, but I'm doing it on the right and it's working out. And I feel like you need a darker colour like that just to give it some sense of contrast um, but you don't necessarily have to go that dark You, but you definitely do need something to give yourself a bit of contrast because you know shade shadow is important And here I'm going in with a waterproof um, pigment marker and I'm just doing the lashes and I did the freckles in a brown one as well. And that is the, um, the fine liners from Faber-Castell. And then I think that I'm done with the faces and then from there I moved on to the hair. So that will be very exciting. So with the hair, I decided to go a bit different. I just feel like um, with it, with this piece, here, I just felt I just felt unique in this mood. I just felt in this mood where I felt like these girls are gorgeous. They need to be out of this world. So I chose out of this world colors. So the one on the left will be red, and the one on the right will be like a pastely blue. So. The way that I've re um, coloured it in, I basically chose, I think it was six, six colours. Um, I may list them below, but um, basically you go dark to dark to light, but you keep the light, the light section at the arch, the arch of the hair. And that's how I've done it. Um, you can always look at other referent pi referent pictures um, to see how other people have done it, but this is the way I've done it, just because I think it's pretty cool. Um, but it does take a while, so we'll just watch and move on. So as you can see, you'll notice that I'm wearing my towel because I just had a shower and I still I left it on just so that I could um, take up that damp hair. But I'm sorry if you see it. Um, that's very embarrassing. Sorry guys. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was in the shot.
So the same idea goes for the hair on the right hand side. Um, if you just take um, into consideration what I've said before, the lightest bits are at the arches, so where it curves the most, that's where you would put the, high, the lightest bit of the hair. Um, so as you can see, as every time I'm colouring, I'm just it's it's almost like a pattern between the colors from dark to light and then back up to dark again and um, that's the best way for me to describe it uh, if you can watch the video you can see how I've done it as well uh, so even though they're not identical girls if you just follow the concept or the idea that the lightest parts are at the curve the curve of the hair that's where you will know where to let it go um, dark to light but yeah, you can always watch the video and just see how I've done it and follow that if you like. So I feel like the jewels was one of the most hardest parts to um, do because I was at a point where I just didn't want to ruin it and I was very concerned of my color choices but um, I went with blues, pinks just because I didn't want to stand out too much compared to the blue hair but I wanted to complement it at the same time as well as choosing colors that kind of stood out a little so that's why I chose the pinks and the purples so I, w I was choosing the blues because I just wanted to complement the hair in some sort of way and as you can see here I'm using gold ink and this is the PH the Dr. PH Martin gold ink and I'm using that on certain parts of the hair piece so um, if you follow along, I hope you guys enjoy. I just don't want to talk too much. <laughs> but um, as you can see, I'm rendering, and I think I, I what I what I do here, I blended from the pink to the purple. Um, this one on the right was my first headpiece, and I wasn't really feeling it. Uh, I think when I went on the other, the left side, I really got into it and I really got into the groove. So as you can, you will see at the end, you will love, or I like, I like the left, the left hand side's headpiece better than the right hand side. I think it's just because I was just getting into the groove with the right, but um, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. But I definitely do prefer the left hand side's um, headpiece, and I hopefully you guys will agree with me when you watch.
and uh, I just feel like I just feel while watching this I got a groove going on in this one I just knew what I was going to do I just, I just had a plan and I went for it but um yeah I, sh yeah, I just went from a warm warm orange to yellow going from um, left to right and I was really digging this I really like this look and I think I applied it through the bottom as well so yeah you can do this with any color by the way if you have brown hair you could go with the red to yellow or you could go to a purple to pink you know um, yeah you can do whatever but um, this is the way I colored it and I felt like this really complemented the hair color and if I had brown I think this would also complement the hair color but um yeah, just the way I've rendered it. If you want to like follow through as well, but change the colors, you can do that as well. But just the ideas of how I've rendered it um, really make it stand out. It's really poppy at the moment, hey. So I chose the green because I felt like it stood out compared to the red. Now if I chose something like a um, purple, it probably would have kind of lost, You would have. it would have been lost I believe, amongst the red it would have been lost. I could have done a blue as well, but I was um, hustling towards the green, I don't know why. But that's what I just did. So at this point you can agree with me, um, the left side I feel like it's coming together a lot more than the right hand side and I think it's because the headpiece just complements the hair so much and um, it's, I don't hate the, the right hand side's headpiece but I'm loving the left hand side but I'm loving the right hand side skin so you know everything is about process and everything is about um, you know, just learning as you go. You're not going to love everything you do, but you're definitely going to um, learn from it. So I decided to keep using that gold ink by Dr. Ph. Martin with a um, with a with a um, with a nib, a freehand nib. Is that what you call it? Anyway, I just used it and I went over certain bits of the headpiece just because I felt like I just felt like using it and I felt like if I turned the page on a certain angle you would have caught the metallic color so yeah and then um, yeah we colored the bird the bird headpiece and um, I only used like three or four colors and then I left some bits um, blank so I could fill in with the gold ink again but I was only the color that I chose really reflected the existing colors in the headpiece. So moving on, I did the background and I was very bold and I did the I did the background in watercolor. 
Um, if you see my other watercolour paints and the way I paint, I use a lot of water. So I was kind of concerned there that I might ruin it or it might seep through to the other page. But it didn't. And the book, the paper stock on this book really handles paper very well. I know it will buckle, but um, because it is a book, I wasn't really concerned. Because I knew if you close the book and you put weight on it, it's definitely going to flat out. So... Um, there's no concern there, so there was only me being careful at the edges of the book just because I didn't want to run the paint on the other pages or behind um, or the back pages of this one. But yeah, you just had to be really careful on um, where you paint with the watercolor background. I did a galaxy inspired background, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed doing this background. Um, you might you won't you probably won't have any trouble when you're painting this and you're painting near the um, paper just because um, well for me I did have no issue because I was using Faber Castell Polychromers and they're wax based so if you're using watercolor paint and you get it on this wax based pencil it's really just gonna slide off um, if you've really rendered it deep and you've really got that coverage. Um, going on with your pencil, the watercolor paint won't. The watercolor paint won't stick to the pencil. It will just slip right off if you if you wipe it off. Anyway, so I'm using um, a Posca pen just to do the highlights, um, add a few hair strokes, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope my overview, my commentary has been helpful. Or you know, it's like a chit chat, I guess. Comment below if you have any questions. I am happy to answer. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and feel free to watch my other videos.